How's it going guys? In this video, we're gonna go over everything I know on how to get your photos super sharp and super crispy. So everyone's trying to get their photos, their photography to be super sharp and super crispy. Same here, me too. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's not quite so simple as just flicking a switch to go onto crispy mode to make your photos super crispy, unfortunately. So in this video, of course, we're gonna go over every single little tip I can think of with trying to make your photos crisp and sharp and as awesome as they can be. And of course, do some photos in the video together walking through some stuff, so it's gonna be really good, so make sure to stick around. And if you like this kind of stuff, I would definitely recommend subscribing. I have tons of tutorials on the channel and so much more to come, plus lots of cool live streams, stuff like that on the channel all the time. So definitely, please, that'd be awesome. Drop a quick subscribe. So the first thing I think of when I'm thinking of like a super crispy photo is my aperture or my f-stop. If you're ever shooting with a very low f-stop or a very low aperture, something like an f1.8, that's my favorite. If you can get that low, so your main subject of the photo will be very in focus and then everything else, the rest of the photo will be very blurry and out of focus, which really gives that very sharp and crisp look to the subject of your photo. Really lowering the f-stop on your camera can really give that look that one might consider to be extra crispy. My favorite thing to do. I'm always shooting at a really low f-stop. So the higher you crank up your f-stop to f3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the bigger and wider your focus range will be. So the more stuff in your photo, all of that stuff will also be in focus as well. So that setting with your f-stop is definitely something to really think about and keep in mind when you're adding multiple subjects or different things in your photo for sure. And I also learned a really awesome great trick about getting multiple things in focus in your shot while still maintaining a low f-stop. So I'm gonna go over that later on in the video and that's gonna be really good. So for this part, I'm gonna get real deep into my weird thought process right now. So in my experience, the harder your camera has to work, the less crispy your photo will be. So this is what I mean by that. So your camera will end up having to work harder to lighten up a photo when it doesn't really have the light to work with. So for instance, your ISO is a way to brighten up your photo when you need to, you know, crank up the ISO. But if you end up cranking up your ISO too high, you're basically like artificially brightening up your photo. So in turn makes your camera work harder to brighten it up, which will then make your photo a little less crispy and very grainy looking. So I typically will try to keep my ISO pretty low just all the time, just because I don't want to make my camera work too hard and I don't want to make my photos less crispy. And I have an entire tutorial on camera settings and everything I know about camera settings for toy photography too. I'll have that linked in the video description here as well. So if you're trying to keep your photo nice and crispy, but you wanna brighten it up a little bit, instead of just cranking up your ISO, maybe slow your shutter speed down a little bit. If you slow your shutter speed down a little bit, you're giving your camera a little bit more time, physically giving it more time to take in more light to brighten up your photo. So it's not working too hard when you're giving it more time or you could just bring in outside light. If you have some more lights, bring that in. Some of the crispiest shots that I like of mine that I've taken have been in outside when there's lots of light and my camera doesn't have to work that hard because it's already got all that light available to it to shoot with. So be good to your camera, love your camera. The harder you make it work, the less crispy your shots are gonna be. Just give it some light to work with or give it some extra time to work with. And of course, if you're trying to shoot action too and you need that fast shutter speed or whatever, just make sure you go outside and you got enough light out there for your camera to work with so you can turn your shutter speed nice and fast and still have enough light. And even if you're dealing with fireworks and you don't want too much light, then you can just find the perfect time with an overcast day. It's always about choosing the right time with the right amount of light. Always be thinking about what kind of light you have available to you. Which does bring me to my next subject on crispy photos, which is lighting. So lighting, of course, is a very important aspect of any toy photo or any photo at all. Lighting is like key, lighting, lighting. But if you're trying to make your photo very crisp and sharp, you know, some creative lighting can really make your subject pop, which will really make it feel and look clean and crisp. So creative lighting is very important as well. So if you look over here, I have my patrol trooper over here in this little diorama, which is amazing, made by insightful imagery, of course. I've kind of got some really boring lighting on him. He's, he's just kind of there 
in the diorama, nothing special, but if I put the light on him, great, I can see him, my camera has light, but it's not super necessarily crispy because the lighting's pretty boring, I'm not doing anything very special with it. So really the best thing to do is to take photos from different angles, move your lighting around here until you find a spot that looks cool and creative and dramatic and dynamic because the more dynamic your lighting will look, the more crisp and clean that your photo will look as well. So that lighting is really key. So if I move these little loom cubes around like this, it's just the lighting in more creative spots and different places, you know, that's all you gotta do. And of course, I have an entire tutorial on lighting as well, which will be linked in the description too. Don't you worry, a lot more details on lighting and all sorts of lighting for toy photography in that video. And of course, if you want one of these awesome loom cubes that I use in all of my videos, head to the description below. I have a 10% off coupon for these amazing, amazing things to step up your toy photos for sure. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is focus, like autofocus, manual focus, what types of settings your camera has for focus. And that can be a really big deal because everyone knows the awful feeling you get where you go out and take a photo and you think it looks great and then you come inside to edit and the focus is on the wrong thing. Like his face is out of focus or blurry, which is the worst thing ever. So there's some great ways to avoid that to make sure. So let's get into my setup really quick. So I got my camera all set up, cool. I got my little patrol trooper guy right here, chilling in the, the bushes here. Got some creative lighting behind him. It looks kind of cool to make, you know, crispy popping stuff going on. And that's pretty much it for my setup. So every camera for the most part should have different types of focus types and settings that it has so on mine i have a few different ones so if i go to my focus setting here i have um, a center zone wide flexible shot and then there's three different ones flexible shot small medium large i like going on small then there's expandable spot which is great um flexible spot now a lot of these are really great for like shooting moving objects and people and stuff like that but for toys i like to do this one which is flexible shot small and so what it does is it has a little square if i touch and it'll focus wherever the square is so if i tap the square over behind it'll focus behind him but if i tap the square right on his face boom now i'm focusing right on him to make sure he's very crispy and i got my f 1.8 going on right here too to help with that so here's the thing, every time you're using autofocus and you go to take a photo, it's gonna focus every time you hear that noise. You know? So every time you do that, you bump your camera or something, you could accidentally be focusing on the wrong thing. What if I'm focusing on the arm or something and then his face goes out of focus or back on the leaves again? You know, that's really tough. So what? this is what I like to do. I'll find my spot that I like, especially if I'm taking multiple photos. Find the spot right on his face, boom. I got it. I'll head over here and turn off autofocus. Turned off autofocus and now I don't have to focus every time I go to shoot, it just does it automatically. See, no focusing, no blink, blink, blink. And to stay even more safe, I will use a remote. There's lots of different cheap remotes for different cameras. I'll use a remote too, so I don't have to touch the camera. And so now it takes the photo. Great, I'm not touching it. He won't go out of focus because everything is set. So that's kind of just a little tip to stop you from accidentally focusing on the wrong thing and making sure you're focused on the right thing. Just go through your camera, look, check out the focus settings it has and choose one that works the best for you. Okay, so this next thing I wanna talk about, it's a really cool trick that I kind of discovered recently and I like to call it the focus line. Focus line. So when I shoot, I really love to keep my aperture and my f-stop, like I was saying before, very low. I love that f1.8 because I love the out of focus background and all of that, that just looks really cool and I like that, that's what I like. But it makes it very difficult for me to have multiple subjects in my photo if I want them all in focus. And it's really, really difficult. So I kind of figured something out recently when I was taking this photo of my champ punching a lemon and the lemon was going into this cup of water, blah, blah, blah. And I was able to get every single thing, Machamp, the water, the lemon, Pikachu, all of this stuff, Magikarp, all of these things were in focus in the photo. I was able to keep all those things in focus, still keeping that low F1.8 f-stop, which was awesome. So I figured out this thing called the focus line. And that's what I'm gonna go over right now and do the focus line. Okay, so I've got my 
patrol trooper right here with his camera. He's taking a picture of something and I got some cool lighting, whatever, here on my counter. And so on my camera over here, I have the focus right there on his head, right there. So if I want to add other things in this photo and have them be in focus, they have to be on the same focus line as his head. So let's go over here and let's imagine that his head right here, there's this invisible glass wall line going right from his head, going down this way and over here and this way and everything. And everything that falls on that line will be in focus. It can't be a little over here, that'll be out of focus. Can't be a little over here, out of focus. But as long as it's on this line, going this way or this way, this way, this way, it'll all be in focus. So if I wanna add another subject to the photo and make sure that it's in focus, I need to follow that glass wall, the focus line. So if I'm gonna add Grogu, I gotta make sure he's right underneath, right lined up, oops, with the line just like that. And if I look in camera, he probably looks pretty in focus. He looks very in focus. So that's looking real nice. And he looks like he's taking a picture of him. Yay, okay. So great, if I wanna add anything else, I gotta make sure I'm following that line which is right here or so. So my little patrol trooper, he's gonna take a picture of Grogu too. They're all taking pictures of him. Let's go see if they're all in focus over here. Pretty good, I think I can move the patrol trooper a little bit, scooch him a little bit this way. I think everybody's in focus here. I started my focus here. I started the line on his head, just like that. And so as long as everything's following that line exactly where it is. Yeah, so as long as everyone's following that glass line, everyone will be in focus and that's the focus line. It's good to follow that and keep things nice and crispy. So yeah, that's the focus line. It's like a huge revelation. I can't believe I had that the other day and my life's gonna be so much easier now that I have that. <laughs> So that's just about all of the tips and stuff that I have about making the crispiest and sharpest photos possible. If you guys have any other great tips, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to see, help us all out. I'd love to see what other things you guys have as well. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.